Hey there, welcome to Cameron's Weekly. As I have said before, writing personal statements is not easy, so sometimes seeing an example of a good one can help you structure your own one. In this video, I'm going to deconstruct two of the best personal statements I've seen and although they are in contrasting styles and they're in contrasting applicants, it definitely does serve a good purpose to see the two different types of styles and how they can impact your own personal statement writing. Also, I've included both of the personal statements I've used in this video in the description below, so feel free to check them out there as well. But do remember, any copying will be easily snuffed out by the system, so don't be tempted to copy paste. So let's get started. So the first personal statement is from a successful candidate who applied to Queen Mary's UCL, Imperial, King's College London for Chemistry and also had an interview at Cambridge. They were predicted an A star in Chemistry and Maths and an A in Biology and their final grades were three A's. This personal statement will show you how to write a good overlapping chemical engineering slash chemistry personal statement as well as give you an insight into the style they used to write their personal statement. So the personal statement start reads, Chemical reactions are a form of art. What appears to be a random mix of chemicals is in fact a precise, well-calculated blend of perfectly matched reactants producing a desired product in the most efficient way possible. What intrigues me is the complexity of seeing simple reactions that are constantly happening around us, especially those invisible to the naked eye. I am fascinated by the real-life applications of chemistry as I believe that this is the driver of the modern world. The first sentence is a great way to introduce how the student thinks that chemistry and the reactions that occur are a form of art and how this intrigues him, as well as the next two sentences really hammering home the effect that this candidate believes chemistry has in everyday life and the everyday world. So by indirectly talking about chemistry and its application, he could be talking about chemistry or he could be talking about chemical engineering. So it's very subtle, but yet specific enough for it to apply to both courses. And the next paragraph reads, my interest was sparked by the synthetic route chapter of my A-level course, particularly on the chemical reactions on an industrial level section. A specific example is the production of ammonia, as it encompasses the intricacies of chemical reactions and the weight of environmental factors. This encouraged me to delve into ideas beyond my A-level course by undertaking further research. I began by reading Why Chemical Reactions Happen, a part of a book I thoroughly enjoyed covered the Kapinski equation and how it provided an expression for lattice energy. What specifically attracted me was how the constant 0.874 was derived for rock salt structure from the scientists' astute observations that the ratio of the Madelung's constant to the number of ions varied only slightly between crystal structures. This runs parallel to my maths course where it requires the ability to find the exact key information from given data. The problem-solving aspects of maths is often engaging and thought-provoking, enabling me to gain a different outlook on more challenging chemistry questions. So the second paragraph that I've just read kind of encompasses how the candidate was inspired to delve deeper into chemistry and, as a result, the chemical engineering applications by the chemistry course A-Levels and hits two targets with one arrow being that it covers the A-levels covered and how they're relevant to the chemistry slash chemical engineering course, as well as explaining the motivation that the candidate has for studying this. The use of the book and the reference to the Madelung constant and lattice energies and more specifics about chemistry and its specific applications that could be derived into chemical engineering show that the candidate is particularly motivated because they have gone beyond the scope of their A-level course as they have mentioned to look into specifics about what they could do with either degree and how this applies to real life. The next paragraph of the personal statement reads over summer, I took part in the Sutton Trust project, where I experienced University of Cambridge lectures. A lecture on organic synthesis particularly interested me. It analysed how even the smallest variations in the structures of a drug can cause a big disparity in its properties, shown in the contrast between codeine and morphine. The difference of a hydrogen instead of a methyl group seemingly makes morphine a substantially more powerful and addictive drug. This led me to conduct deeper research as to why this occurs. I discovered how the drug binds to active specific opiate receptors such as the delta, mu and kappa. However, as codeine has a lower affinity for opiate receptors, a higher concentration is needed, thus linking well with the biological aspect of addiction where drugs can alter pathways of the brain by releasing specific chemicals, causing drug dependency and addiction. However, it was also fascinating to see that opioids do not always become addictive, as in the presence of significant pain. 
They act as effective painkillers and so are used in everyday medicine. This paragraph within the personal statement delves deeper into the candidate's supercritical understandings of chemistry, its applications in medicine, and how chemical engineering can be a route into this. And although, again, once again, he's not specifically mentioned chemistry or chemical engineering or the degree of the course, you can infer quite a lot from this that he is quite driven to see how chemistry and applying this to real life through medicine can help people and how it works in general. So I think that definitely does show that they did dedicate extra time to studying something. It also shows that the candidate could be drawn towards the pharmaceutical industry because his reference to organic synthesis, which occurs both in chemistry and chemical engineering degrees, shows that he did definitely consider how you would use the chemistry within the organic synthesis to produce these drugs and how these drugs alterations make them completely different to each other and how it's very important to control the environment when making these drugs. So it once again does show that he has gone beyond the scope of his course and into degree level content to see how and why such things occur. The next paragraph is like this. My interest in the biological links to chemistry motivated me to attend a lecture at Cambridge University on genetics and biochemistry. I was fascinated by how chemical reactions are an integral part of nearly all processes within the human body. To see the existence of chemistry at a molecular level was certainly remarkable, enhancing my appreciation of chemistry's omnipresence. After researching into the applications of chemistry in medicine, I was intrigued by cardioplegia a potassium ion solution used to sedate the heart during open heart surgery, showcasing the versatility of chemistry's many uses. Now, although in this paragraph he may have been more explicit about the use of chemistry, he's also talking about applying chemistry to specific fields like medicine, and through this application he's hinting that he would be motivated to study the link between medicine and chemistry, which is inevitably chemical engineering, because it involves in the scale-up of taking stuff from chemistry and applying it to fields like medicine. So once again, although he has specifically mentioned chemistry and the motivation for studying chemistry, he can also apply this to chemical engineering, hence why he had a successful application. Now moving on to the final two paragraphs of the student's personal statement, they read like this. My work experience placed me in an unfamiliar environment under rigorous pressures where I had to coordinate and communicate in a team to complete tasks, a quality well suited for the practical side of chemistry. Alongside my academic endeavors, Sport is a strong staple of my weekly routine. My competitive nature has led me to participate in competitions across a variety of sports, such as cricket, football and chess. Overall, I believe I possess the correct mentality, supported by the right skill set to study chemical engineering at university. I'm determined to expand and apply my knowledge and make a significant contribution to the future applications of chemistry and chemical engineering. Now, this is the first time the applicant specifically mentions chemical engineering by name, and although this may come across as quite a last slapdash introduction to chemical engineering, he's included it strategically because throughout, the chemical engineering tutors who've been reading this have been waiting for this, whilst the chemistry tutors who've been reading it have kind of already seen the chemistry part, and therefore now know he's also applied to chemical engineering, whilst he wasn't being too explicit about that before. So the final two paragraphs really kind of show the soft skills that the candidate possesses that makes them well-rounded, namely the competitions they participate in, the extracurricular things they take part in, and the sports they're involved with. And the final line really hammers home why the candidate thinks they will be a good fit because it answers the key question of why are you a fit for this course, and he answers with a good, concise, straight-to-the-point answer. As a summary of this first chemical engineering personal statement, Although you can argue that it was more chemistry than chemical engineering, it certainly does have the inspirational style that you could perhaps use in your own personal statement, because although it may come across as, oh, it's too geared towards one course and not enough to another, it was still successful in all the applications he posted and managed to get an interview at Cambridge. So the admissions tutor clearly deemed that he was writing in the correct vein of ideas and had the correct thought process when talking about chemical engineering more generally and subtly when referring to the more explicit mentions of chemistry. The second chemical engineering personal statement is more geared towards chemical engineering as a standalone subject because the candidate applied to all five choices with chemical engineering as the selected route. The candidate applied to Imperial, UCL, Nottingham and also Birmingham receiving offers from all as well as getting to a Cambridge interview. They were predicted three A stars in mathematics, chemistry and biology and an A in physics and they achieved four A stars. 
This statement is more direct in style and talks specifically about the chemical engineering course as well as the modules studied rather than the long term prospects within the degree and although there is mention to that, they do tend to focus more on how they are well prepared to be a good university student studying chemical engineering. If we read the chemical engineering statement first and then go on to analyse it, we'll be able to deconstruct it. It goes like this. Hydrogen and ammonia, the perfect marriage in a carbon free society. From the chemical engineer, looked at the exciting prospect of using ammonia as a hydrogen storage medium for fuel. I came across this article while exploring my curiosity for hydrogen as a viable renewable alternative to fossil fuels. However, hydrogen has many disadvantages in the long term, such as its production and storage expenses. Ammonia, on the other hand, can be produced from carbon free sources and is made up of 17.65% of hydrogen so large quantities can be released. I found this to be an enticing idea that could potentially open up alternative routes for chemical engineering to find cleaner energy resources. Reading about this ingenious solution, as well as my aspiration for a cleaner and safer world, deepened my desire to pursue a degree in chemical engineering. A read of Peter Atkins's Four Laws That Drive the Universe, which explores the four laws of thermodynamics and their universal uses, intrigued me as fundamental concepts in chemical engineering are shown to be applicable in various circumstances. Upon reading this book, I was keen to expand on my knowledge of the topics discussed, so I enrolled in an online course which allowed me to explore and apply thermodynamic formulae, such as one linking thermal conductivity with thermal energy, through the use of calculations. Furthermore, the course introduced me to fluid mechanics, another important topic in chemical engineering. Bernoulli's equation, which shows how height affects the flow rate of a fluid and how that affects the pressure in a reaction vessel, particularly piqued my interest. At first, it was hard to grasp but I was determined to appreciate how it worked and later was able to do so. I enjoy learning scientific concepts from a fundamental perspective as it allows me to appreciate their real world applications. I hope to possibly use new concepts I will learn to design reaction vessels that will be able to convert ammonia back into hydrogen to be used immediately as fuel. Being the only student in my year who achieved a gold award in the senior UKMT maths challenge last year has inspired to take on more challenges and stretch myself academically. As chemical engineering can be demanding, I believe I have a positive mindset that will help me cope with the course as well as a career in the field. Participating in the C3L6 challenge compelled me to think outside the box to answer tough chemistry questions, landing me a silver award. Both the C3L6 challenge and the senior maths challenge have honed my problem solving and mathematical skills, which I know are vital assets for a chemical engineer. Moreover, representing my school in the Cambridge chemistry race with a team enriched my teamwork skills as each problem could only be solved by working together. Teamwork is a crucial aspect that will be part of my degree and in my future career as a chemical engineer. In order to work successfully in a team, strong communication is important. Being a physics and chemistry mentor at school has further developed the way I communicate, particularly through simplifying difficult topics to struggling year 10 students. Outside of school, I play the carniatic violin for 8 years, which has improved my self-discipline as a difficult instrument to master so I was dedicated to be skilled in it. Additionally, having trained in classical dance for a decade has enabled me to better my memory as memorising dance routines was vital for performances. Both activities have also made me a more organised student who can manage her time, which I believe will help me cope with the rigorous nature of academic life. The skills and knowledge I've gained from my experiences have shaped me into a fit chemical engineering student. Therefore, I aspire to make the most of my chemical engineering degree to help our nation progress to one which no longer relies heavily on fossil fuels. The first paragraph is very direct in explaining what the motivation is for the student to study chemical engineering, talking about how the article delved into their interests within renewable energy and hydrogen. So it explains the interesting development in the context of the student and how it further motivated them, hitting the key point of the motivation for the course. The second paragraph is completely constituted on the modules that the university will offer students when they study such as the thermodynamics sections that the candidate talked about, as well as vessel design, which is another important concept that university students often have to contend with. The reference to fluid mechanics and Bernoulli's equation showed that the candidate did definitely go above and beyond to fully engage with the course and learn more about what chemical engineering is all about, and the fact that they say they enjoyed it and explained why they enjoyed it after grappling with difficult equations and problem solving techniques that they had to learn, it shows that the candidate is definitely motivated because they've spent time and dedication to get up to the standard to try and understand what the online courses were talking about, whilst also hitting the supercurricular aspect of the personal statement. This section is particularly effective because it explains the A-level choices without explicitly saying I picked these at A-level and this is what I did with them. So it's a unique style that actually was very effective for the candidate in securing a good application status 
So I think this is something that could be utilized in your own personal statements as well. The third paragraph exemplifies perfectly the one idea per paragraph ideology with the candidate exploring the supercurriculars in depth within the third paragraph. Talking about success in academic competitions and how they develop their soft skills from this and how they use maths, chemistry and other concepts to get success within these competitions helps show that the candidate definitely does apply themselves to try and improve their status as a good candidate and a good student for chemical engineering. It also shows the candidate does have the necessary leadership and soft communication skills such as how they worked in a team within the chemistry Cambridge race and how they also were a tutor and a mentor to younger students showing that they have developed into a well-rounded candidate who'd be applicable into the chemical engineering course. And finally, the final two paragraphs within the personal statement really hammer home the extracurricular side of the personal statement, reaching the proper threshold that should be within the personal statement's makeup. So with reference to the carniatic violin and the classical Asian dance that they practiced, it helped to show that the candidate definitely has rounded themselves into a person with other interests as well, and they know how these interests can help them to achieve what they need to achieve within chemical engineering degree as a student and within their career. And especially the final statement was very effective talking about what they wish to do with their degree and therefore being successful overall. So what have we learnt? In terms of these two personal statements, very different in style and very different in course applications, you can definitely see that it's not necessarily one clear cut formula on how to write a personal statement because it is unique to every person and what they've done. But we can definitely see from here some key ideas within style that you could perhaps replicate or seek inspiration from, such as talking explicitly about things versus talking about them implicitly, or talking about soft skills in relation to things you will do on the degree course, or focusing more on what you can do with the degree course in the long term. So with that concludes the video. Thank you for watching the video. Be sure to like it if you enjoyed it, and leave your comments and suggestions down in the comment section below. Don't forget to follow us on our social media channels and if you click here or here, you can watch another one of our videos. Click up here to subscribe and thank you very much.